Hi guys and welcome back to another Doctor Race video. Today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22 and today we're going to be using Wayne Gardner from the back of the grid right here in Donington Park. Now today's idea was, oh my goodness, they're all breaking really firm there on the brakes for Redgate. Goodness me, had to take avoiding action otherwise going to slam into the back of either Jeremy Williams, Kevin Schwantz or Luca Cadalora ahead of us. That was a scary moment but uh, yes, the reason I'm choosing Wayne Gardner, of course, 1992 was the last time he won a MotoGP Grand Prix and of course that was an iconic race the one where Kevin Schwantz went down and started waving the oil flag after the marshals didn't see anything it was a rather entertaining, entertaining sight and I watched that video maybe a couple of months ago and I had to watch it again recently because that's just that moment where Kevin Schwantz grabs the flag is just absolutely fantastic <laughs> it's, it's so iconic but also as well as mentioned on my channel I will be going to Donington Park this year in World Superbike. I'll be at the Ride 4 BMW trailer, so if you are going to be there in Donington Park for the World Superbike Grand Prix weekend, let me know in advance and we can meet up and uh, you can have a little meet and greet with Dr. Ace and we can have a chat and discuss Ride 4 and also gameplay tips for MotoGP 22 as well. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments section down below. It'd be great to see you guys. But now breaking very, very firm into the right hander for Turn 10 for the Melbourne Hairpin. Got the job done, but we did run it in deep, so we're now going to have to try and regain the power and make sure we get past Schwantz and Cadalora. Now, something I will mention with these bikes, I've mentioned it many times before, the 500ccs in general are quite possibly my favourite bikes to use in this game. Possible. The 2009 ones are probably my ultimate favourite, but I really love using this 500cc bikes. They're just so, so good. Love sliding the rear into corners, and you're going to see a lot of that here today. But something I didn't mention is that I did try and doing this video earlier and I completely blitzed the pack. So I took my time on that first lap, giving them a bit of an advantage. For some reason, Schwantz and Cadillo are really, really slow there. So now we can start churning on the power. Start bringing on the power, start churning out those fast lap times and see what we can produce. And also as well, this was recorded before the latest update, which included the Moto2 bikes and the Prima Prana Ducati livery. So if you want to see more, I've got a video on my channel that you can check out in the uh, in the description down below but for now we're going to be charging down the pack trying to catch up to Jeremy Williams he's 2.1 seconds two seconds ahead of us up the road Max Bianchi's up there as well for company with the man on board the Aprilia but bringing on the power with the soft front medium rear we've got to make sure we get the braking right down here into the S's so firm braking will go for the left hand side keeping it nice and tight and then change the direction for the right hand side beautifully done and within that one braking zone we gained around half a second on Jeremy Williams' Aprilia as we slide the rear into Melbourne Hairpin. Oh, it's getting a little bit out of shape, but my goodness, these bikes love to slide, and I'm all for sliding them. You just go really firm on the rear brake with a little bit of front brake just to make sure you're holding the bike steady. But 1.1 seconds is now the gap to McWilliams, so we have absolutely decimated that advantage in half as we get across the line. Are we the fastest one? We are indeed. Eight tenths of a second quicker than the race leader right now, the young Valentino Rossi. As we go to the right-hand side for Redgate, careful upon the acceleration as the rear tyre just slips ever so slightly. Just almost wants to kick out, but we're holding it in nice and tight, being gentle on the acceleration. If you want to see the acceleration, pay attention to the bottom right corner of your screen. You'll notice how much throttle is actually being applied coming out of some of these corners. You've got to be really careful and very, very Relax with the throttle. If you're going to be too aggressive, it's going to be good night Vienna, so just be very, very careful in that regard. But into McLean's for the right-hander for turn seven. Just touching the apex there, not really what you want to be doing. You want to keep it nice and tight without running over the rumble strip. But now bringing it into coppice and running it a little bit wider to then chuck it back up on the inside. Too eager on the acceleration there, twice there. Just slipping the rear ever so slightly. But now into the S's. We are superior on the brakes compared to the AI, still sliding the rear in for good measure in for the S's. We now turn to the right hand side, getting really close, but also just pushing a bit too much now. But here, into the Melbourne hairpin, we're going to go for a lunge here on McWilliams. Up on the inside, we have the, yes, we have the line, and we did it without even touching the AI. That's great. The AI usually likes to turn in on you there, but we did it without going too near. Now up on the inside of Max Bianchi, beautifully done. A little bit of a nudge onto Gary McCoy there. Sorry, mate. Just a <laughs> bit of a nudge there from the compatriots as we now get on through. Using the speed behind Eddie Lawson. He's slow on the exit there as we now improve the lap time once again to 130.171. So almost two tenths of a second quicker than the previous lap time as we get very close to the inside of the apex there for Redgate. But now to the right-hand side. 
I do feel we could get a lunge going into the uh, into the loop in a minute. The old hairpin possibly to the left-hand side for Craner Curves. To the right-hand side, not close enough, but you better believe we'll get a nice power boost as we now go to the left-hand side. And under the big signage, we go under the bridge to Starkey's Bridge and now to the left-hand side once again. Could we have a lunge into McLean's? Not going to happen. You've got to get the Schwantz Curve right there, otherwise you cannot get the positioning right for McLean's. But I do fancy a lunge into that corner. I absolutely love sticking up the inside of a would-be victim of going into the right-hand there. Now up on the inside of the Kajiva for now as Lawson threatened to get back ahead, but we are all right for now. Yamaha ahead with Carlos Checker will go firm on the brakes, sliding the rear once more. Crivier is ahead of us now, the former MotoGP world champion back in 1999. So Carlos Checker beautifully done flying back up on the inside, but you better believe Gardner back on the brakes. Oh, a little bit of contact, but nothing too major. We're now into the Melbourne hairpin. Look at Checker. Checker's trying to get past here. He can't check out. But he's certainly giving his best shot as we now go firm on the brakes and up on the inside of Crivier and just giving Barros a little nudge. I don't think he'll mind that too much. Although he did get pushed out pretty wide. But he can use my slipstream, so there's still a benefit for Alex Barros. So we now move up on the inside and around the outside of Kenny Roberts. Norik Arbe is there as well. Yamaha versus Honda. We've seen it many times before, but going a little bit wide for Redgate. Suzuki tries to dive on the inside, but it's not going to happen. Roberts is going to have to wait behind just a few more minutes as we now try and attack. Norik Arbe, so to the left hand side, Norif Yumi will be fuming in a minute because we're going to slip it up on the inside. Do we fancy it into McLean's? Let's see if we get close enough. I mentioned earlier that I would love to stick it on someone and <laughs> Norif Yumi is not going to be happy about this, is he? If we get this one done into McLean's, I'm going to love it, but we're going to try it anyway. Up on the inside of McLean's, a little bit of contact. It's not really what I wanted, but hey ho, I guess that worked. Could have been better if I'd lined up a little bit better and been a little bit closer, but hey ho, it's still okay. We've got the move done, and that's all that matters, but good, solid, consistent lap times here. Another 130 is incoming, and I've got to say, with MotoGP 22, I'm a lot more consistent than I was in MotoGP 21, so I'm really pleased with my progression as we go around the outside of Wayne Rainey. Did not see that coming, but Rainey will have the speed to then position it into the Melbourne hairpin. Oh, massive contact! Oh, <laughs> that was just two riders wanting the same piece of tarmac as well to keep it nice and tight to the apex. Bring on the power. Do we have the inside line? We certainly do. Beautifully done from Gardner. Outbreaking John Kaczynski into the final corner to Goddard for turn 11 as we now can really smell victory here. We can smell blood in the water. Doing ahead of us. Rossi just a little bit further ahead, but that once four second advantage for Rossi has just disappeared. And look at that lap time. The same lap time twice. The, exactly the same lap time. 1.30.429. Oh, I'm loving that. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's really good. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. I mentioned earlier how consistent we've been, and you can't get any consistent than that. So here we go then. To the right-hand side for the old hairpin. Doing ahead of us. Rossi, just a few more bike lengths ahead of uh, Mick Doing as we go to the left-hand side here. Compatriot on Compatriot in a moment's time. Honda on Honda. As, do we get... Oh, my goodness. Do we get Doing into the right-hander now? That's much cleaner, but Dewan's still got the outside line. Bit of contact, knee-touching boot. And we're now through. Rossi is still in the lead, but for how much longer? Wayne Gardner is flying here in MotoGP 22. We are absolutely kicking arse and taking names. And over the inside of Valentino, Wayne Gardner firm on the brakes. And for the left-hander for the S's, sliding the rear in with silent pizzazz. We've got the job done. We're now up into the lead, and we do have a, a potential... I'm doing a 129 lap time here. A sub 130 for the 500cc bikes as we slide it into the rear, into turn 10. Just a little bit out of shape. Oh, too eager in the acceleration there. You see the rear just slip. Still gaining a lot of time though compared to the previous lap time of a 134.29. Now to the left hand side for Goddard's on sixth lap of eight. We're going to absolutely smash the lap time here. Across the line, it's going to be a 129.653. What a progression in the lap times. Absolutely love Donington Park, absolutely love MotoGP, and I absolutely love these 500cc bikes. They are so, so good to use. They're so enjoyable. I cannot wait to start our classic championship. Not sure which rider we're going to choose yet. Of course, I did the last one in MotoGP 20, and it seems to be rather enjoyable for me and for you, as, you guys as viewers as well. So let me know who you want me to use for the 500cc World Championship when we get to it. But for now... Leading this Grand Prix by a good mile now. Good 1.2 seconds to Valentino. 
loving life up at the front. Here we are, four tenths of a second down on the previous lap time. But at this point, I'm taking it easy. We're just taking it steady. And I've got to say, sometimes this is where I begin to struggle. After charging so hard and pushing to the maximum, when we get to the front, I'm kind of relaxed. And I can just chill out. And when I start to chill, start relaxing and thinking about other things, mistakes are made. And there you go, right on cue. That is a big mistake. That was a huge mistake. A two track limit warnings there in one corner. But <laughs> nice breaking into Melbourne hairpin. I've just slowed it down a little bit because I feel like I gained a bit too much of an advantage by abusing the corner there for the S's. But my goodness, I need to pay attention. <laughs> when you get into the front to start thinking about other things, videos and content and everything else, and just get a little bit sidetracked. But for now, back to it to start the final lap time. It's my first 131 lap time, and that really is a blemish on a perfect lap so far, or at least a perfect good couple of laps here in Donington Park, so that is a shame. I'm kind of, kind of disappointed about that one now, but still holding the head up high, we've done a great job. We've done a really good job, and I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. If you are, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing as well. But now it's the right-hand side for the old hairpin. Starkey's bridge for the final time of asking as we go to the left-hand side. Be careful in the acceleration here, guys. It's going to be really smooth. Unless you uh, bring on the power too early and you end up sliding out of contention. But we are just losing a bit of time into the McLean's call. Oh, massive wheelie! Whoa! <laughs> and now the, R stick, the right stick is broken. I can't view behind me for some strange reason. I don't know why this happens. I really don't. And that was a hearts in mouth moment. My heart rate certainly increased there when I thought I was going to wheelie out of the race. But now braking rather firm for the left-hand side for the S's. Nice and clean this time, I do hope. Yes! Much, much better now. A little bit embarrassing on that previous lap, but this time we're doing everything we need to do. Concentration certainly dipped, but we're doing pretty well nonetheless. So, coming into the final sector, Melbourne Hairpin tackled pretty well. Still slow on this particular lap, but 1.3 seconds advantage to Valentino behind. You better believe it's a Honda lockout on the podium. It's a brilliant day for the Japanese manufacturer. Brilliant day for Wayne Garden. It's a brilliant day for Dots Races. We take another victory, but this time in Donington Park. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know what else you want to see from the channel, and I'll be happy to oblige. But upon that note, guys, thanks for watching, and ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.